Hello, and welcome to another healing conversation brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and it is the mission of this series, the Empowerment Series, to open hearts, empower millions, and raise the vibration on our planet. My guest today is a fifth dimensional person. We're all fifth dimensional, we're all multidimensional, but my guest today really lives it and assists others in reaching and blending this fifth dimensional and higher dimensional realms within itself. Lisa Transcendence Brown, thank you so much for being here again on Healing Conversations. Welcome. Thank you. I am always honored and excited to join you for all that you do to assist others as well. So thank you very much. Well, you join us from the beautiful island of Lemuria, Kauai, the mountaintops of Lemuria. And we hope that we can encode today's video, nice Google Hangouts video, with the essence of Lemuria that comes through your voice. And together, all of us in our heart space can bring forth that Lemurian energy that we remember as well and add to our group in this space. So thank you to the listener for joining us. Today, oh my goodness, we are coming up on the end of October and this month astrologically and so much more with solar flares has been pretty intense. Lisa, give us an update. What is going on? A lot <laughs> is an understatement. It has been um, a, quite an intense month. Um, it, the physical body is taking a beating uh, for upgrades uh, for ascension uh, for many. Uh, when the light body activates, everything um, goes haywire, and um, the physical body has to be raised vibrationally. Um, the consciousness of our physical body and um, the consciousness of our mental body, our emotional body, um, all to synchronize and unify in light with our uh, soul, higher self aspect body. Um, and so, what's going on is that everybody um, at some point in time for them um, is uh, going through their ascension process. Some are um, have been working in consciousness and expanding their own consciousness and their uh, multidimensionality and for quite some time and so for those uh, the closer I'm using these words only for the sake of that one gets to ascension um, the more um, physical it becomes um, our emotional body has to completely um, purge of anything left of our uh, old lower dimensional, I'm using lower only for the sake of description, um, aspects, um, our human aspect, anything that is fear, um, um, greed, lack, um, blame, guilt, anything that is not of love um, completely um, and of a place of consciousness where we come from automatically as our true essence from inside um, has to clear. Um, our mental body and um, our mind um, gets really strong and starts fighting back and so there's a lot of struggle uh, for many going on. Um, so all of our bodies have to synchronize uh, as light uh, so that we can actually uh, ascend in the physical here and for this this becomes very intense um, it's pushing up uh, deep-seated in addition uh, to what was typical uh, for ascension. Uh, now we've gone so far beyond that. We're bringing forth Lemurian consciousness and the galactic consciousness. And, and we've been doing this for quite some time. Um, for me, uh, I tend to, I'm not using this for sake of comparison because we don't do that here, um, for sake of my own journey, um, be about a year uh, before a lot of people, uh, humans, uh, so that I can assist others as well. So I went through my own ascension process um, last year. Um, it is a process that we separated in our mind. So we have to actually unify so completely that we don't hold separation inside any longer. And it is our veils. It is our uh, forgotten or remembering state, uh, whichever version you're looking at at that time. So lately, it is intense. It's shaking out everything that is not us. It's, it's bringing up our core existence, which is from beyond here. 
and it is the part of remembering that most did not have access to. And it continues to evolve in, in every moment of every day. It doesn't end. Um, we just keep expanding. Uh, Multidimensionality is a lot of fun. Um, we don't get to have fun until we get rid of, and that's a word, get rid of, uh, until we transcend that which is not fun, which is not who we truly are, which is our human existence that kept us limited to start with. So, you name it, it's happening. Um, for those who focus on an outside world out there, the outside world is falling apart. Um, that will continue um, to increase, expedite, whichever word you desire to use. Um, the outside wor world is our creation. It's our hologram. It's our illusion. It's our play. Um, it's our program. And once we come to understand that, we actually start changing the program. We reprogram ourselves. Um, we pay attention to absolutely everything. We are so conscious that we're conscious in every dimension and every state all of the time. And therefore, we get to affect parallels. We get to affect other dimensions. We get to quantum jump. We get to do whatever we want. Um, from a space of consciousness that expands so far beyond here. Um, we cannot do that and hold on to the old limited human belief system um, and the things that we were taught or the things we came to believe. We actually have to challenge everything, every thought, um, every mentality, and we have to um, transcend that and go so far beyond it. We obliterate realities um, at will. cannot do that and hold on to the old witch. So there is, you ask what's going on? Absolutely everything. And if it is of an old human program, belief, illusion, play, drama, it doesn't matter which, they're all the same thing, different words. Um, we separated belief systems, we separated words, we separated everything. Um, we have to unify all of that. All of our existences run simultaneously. They're not separated a, across past and future a, as we once believed. Um, we don't come to exist so present that we become masters again and creators and alchemists is words that we use um, by staying in the same place of separation as we once did. So this means a lot of letting go and this is what um, we as humans have a, have a hard time with is because we fear letting go of what was safe. Safety goes out the window with this. <laughs> but what's funny is we don't fall anymore. We float. We, there a cloud catches us. Um, we don't um, lose anything. We, uh, things start coming to us the more we open up and the more we let go of, of what we help from a place of fear. So everything's going on. You name it, every existence we've ever um, been, which is everything, we've been everything, we are everything, and the memories of that is what's trying to come forth, um, our ancient knowledge that um, a lot of us are, have been sharing for quite some time is buried deep within. We go inside, we access it, we turn frequencies on, we um, activate in light and we share knowledge in light and as we share we activate our own which is a part of a unity community whatever uh, consciousness and the more we share the more we receive and so we learn to start letting go and sharing with others and we couldn't share as humans and it is a part of what we built into our programming that if we want more knowledge if we want more abundance if we want more anything we have to share and so it makes people come together, it makes people open up, it makes us let go uh, because we want more. And more comes through letting go. More comes through our own expansion. Um, and we're not doing it from a place of greed. We're doing it for everybody as a whole. We're doing it from a place of love. We're doing it from a place of creating new earth, uh, which we don't create, we arrive in. We've already been here. So the rest of us is catching up to that. Our mind um, can't see until we learn to synchronize our mind and our heart and we unify uh, the mind and the heart as one. Um, our higher self aspect, we walk as that here. It is not a thing of a future anymore. So um, does that answer a, a little bit of all of the things going on and that it doesn't even touch it, to be honest with you? We'll need 10 hours or more at least, like a whole weekend, to really delve into what's going on 
but I know that we all feel it. And so uh, just for me personally, it's really being aware of my motivations for doing everything. It's a time of great discernment. It's a time of really knowing that, yes, we are here creating our world and our thoughts. And I love what you said there about um, moving beyond these things that hold us back. We are boxed in by our thoughts and our beliefs all over the place. And when we are challenged and do move through them and expand, it feels really great. For example, getting on this show on Google Hangouts was challenging, but here we are, we made it, and that is expansion. So we are all here to expand, and one way that we can expand in our consciousness is to go into our dream space more, and remember our dreams more, and you're actually doing it on a level where you're creating in your dreams, in your, you call it quantum jumping. Share more about what this is in this powerful realm. Very well, when we come to understand that the dream state is not a dream state, that helps a whole lot. Um, our dream state, a real state. It's a real state. Well, it is another. It's another uh, version of a reality uh, that just has not taken physical form here. Now, the cool thing is that as we unify inside, the dream state becomes a reality in the physical. We start bringing those dreams forth here, but we cannot do that. Um, at our previous vibration, the frequency of separation. And so the dream state is a reality that we actually go into and we interact in, and we work with other souls. We go to school. Um, in the beginning, and years ago, I was going to school all the time. I was doing initiations, and, and I was passing things and getting... Um, they went to angel school. That was a surprise. I didn't know we did these things. Uh, everything that I've done, I've done... Um, and then understood after the fact. Uh, but um, the dream state is a simultaneous reality that runs concurrent with this one. All of our realities do. Um, we close our eyes to go there. Um, the more conscious we are in a waking state, the more conscious we are in all states. You can replace the word state from, with dimension. You're in another dimension. You can replace it with reality. You're in another reality. Um, this one just happens to be in the physical body, whereas all of those are real too. Now, real from the perspective of any one of our dreams can be a reality. And technically, they all are. We, we, our consciousness expands from this one to those. Now, where you have realities there full of fear, that's because that's still held within this physical existence here. And we have to go inside and clear that out. And as we do, then we raise our, our unified vibrational frequency of all of our bodies. And then the, the dream state becomes an awesome and amazing one um, that we actually get to intentionally and consciously participate in. Um, I can actually close my eyes and say, okay, I'm ready to jump. You have to be ready before things can occur unless your higher self aspect. Um, your higher self is just you. It's just a different vibration. It's you in another dimension. It's you in space. They're all the same thing, different words. Um, you just access a different frequency. We call it tuning. You can tune to any frequency you want to. Once you learn to open your heart and keep it open all the time without the fear of a threat or survival mode or or lack and shutting it down. The moment we go to greed, the moment we go to lack, the moment we go to fear, our heart closes or puts up a wall. And it's really important to pay attention to the energy flow that's coming from us. Because when we are transmitting a new hologram, if when we are transmitting a new reality, energy's flowing from the inside out. So the moment we stop flow, our heart shuts down and it constricts and it puts those barriers and those veils back up. And we go from a conscious state to an unconscious one. And this is about staying conscious all the time. Then the limits you spoke of before, we don't have limits here. But we don't live in a reality that's unlimited by believing that we are. So every time we have a limit come forth, we understand it's, it's an opportunity to expand. We're supposed to figure out a way to get beyond those limits, not from a place of fight, 
but from a place of it actually expands our mind. Um, and I use different ways to do this, but I have a um, thing that I do where I tell people to create bubbles and start filling the bubbles with ideas uh, because you want to use anything that's creative and artistic in, in order to open those portals inside. The moment we go linear, we start making lists and we, and, and we contract. And so we have to bypass the, the human aspect of our mind until we have mastered that so that it doesn't affect us uh, anymore. I can make a list now without closing down. Um, so it, it's understanding which side of the brain you're using and why and when and to enhance everything with um, utilizing your senses and opening all of that up because this is a very um, sensory um, reality. You utilize um, sound and feeling and visual aspects that the human aspect can't access here. Um, and then what you do is once you've come to enhance all of those and as the light body um, lightens or activates in frequency, um, energy has a spin. Um, you reverse the old spins of energy and you create new ones. And as you do this, um, your field amplifies energetically and you're not draining or pulling to you anymore, you're actually transmitting and you actually get to transmit your own reality and, and, and come to be on the earth with others that do the same thing as well. It's a reality of intention, one of senses where you appreciate everything, where all things are sacred. Um, this is not something we just turn on overnight and it's there, it's something we have to come to exist as from the inside out. So it means going inside, which is what everybody avoids, um, and there will be things that will force, I'm going to use the word force us inside, um, until we understand it, and then we start doing it on our own. Nothing forces us technically, that is our own pre-programming, uh, our own DNA, our own um, um, journey we chose prior to coming here. Um, it's just that when it's time to wake up, when it's time to be awakened, when it's time to start moving beyond the veils, um, things have to occur to push us in that direction because we don't understand it yet. And so we um, misinterpret uh, the journey and to think that we're being forced into something that we don't want or that things were taken away, which is not the case. Uh, we programmed this ourselves. Um, coming to understand our own program and, and how we programmed our reality is key because now I can look at everything and go, wow, I put that there, and I can understand what it means. And so coming to understand how you programmed your own reality, um, what in your illusion is for you, what everything is a symbol or a sign, a metaphor, and then you can interpret it, and you understand your own, your own um, program that, that you set forth. So it's pretty cool. Uh, we pay attention to everything, but we don't go unconscious anymore. We are conscious in every moment. Um, I've had a couple of occasions where the veils were put back in place so I could see uh, the different realities and that was uh, not fun at all um, because the limits were all put back and the old world was all I could see and I actually woke up one day going I'm on the wrong planet I don't live here <laughs> and the person went looked at me and go what are you talking about you're on the wrong planet I'm like I'm on the wrong planet I don't live here I had no idea that the human aspect couldn't see the world that we see. I had no idea that it was so different and how colorful and vibrant and interactive it was. Um, the old reality is very limiting. Even the physical body can expand. Um, it blows up with air, which is your consciousness expanding from the inside out. So there's so much to this. Um, it's, it's, when we have understanding, when we embrace it, it does become much easier. Uh, the more struggle and resistance we have, the more we um, have the perception of suffering. Um, we don't have to suffer anymore, um, but that too is a choice, and the human aspect does have to suffer. And that's really important to understand because I have had to step back many times and allow other humans who say, I'm not ready yet, to, to, to step back and allow them suffering inside their head, suffering in the physical, in order to get the point and, and to make a different choice. This is a journey of choice and most um, are not ready yet to make that choice. They don't, they're not ready to believe 
it's too much. And I was actually shown um, a, a replay of a reality that I had when I was much younger of how I was scared and how I chose not to choose. And I'm like, no, I can't, I can't do that. It was handed to me at one point in time, and I'm like, I can't do that. I'm scared. And I chose to go continue veiled for another human time 20 years. For us, time doesn't exist, so it doesn't really matter anymore because there are not even real memories here. So um, there is a lot to this journey. Understanding is key. Uh, we don't struggle and fight any longer. Um, it's built into our bodies of consciousness, though our physical body actually holds the barriers in place well. So once we understand that there is um, a consciousness for each one of our bodies, then we can learn to either separate or unify them based upon what we're trying to do. Um, the higher we vibrate, in words only, um, the more our um, bodies separate so we can see them. And then they unify again um, in a place of peace and balance and, and love um, so that we don't have the old um, limits or um, struggles left anymore. And so um, understanding if, if for this, because if we don't understand, uh, we um, continue to fight and struggle and try to maintain control. Um, the further we get in this journey, the less safe there is. Um, which safety was a belief system as well. Uh, we don't need um, safe anymore. It was an old perception as well. Sorry. <laughs> so then let's continue that on we don't need safety anymore. That was a perception as well because we know that to be in safety where we think that we need safety, that's separation. Mm -hmm. So really that is the realm of no fear. Well, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Um, the moment we realize we've gone to safe, we, we, we go, oh, I'm back in safety mode, I'm back in protection mode. There's a perception of fear. And we actually look at the perception and say, what am I protecting myself from? And we realize no, nothing, a belief, a thought, a, a perceived threat that doesn't exist, uh, something we created uh, to transcend. And when we actually start putting things in perspective and challenging our own mindsets, um, we don't believe them anymore. And they don't maintain the uh, emotional charge, the amount of control that they once did. So here we are walking on new earth and walking on new earth here now. New earth really is a frequency. So if we are here to raise our vibration and raise the vibration of the planet, then what can we do? Basically what you're saying is um, we have to change our beliefs about everything. When you said we have to question everything, for some who are listening to this, I can hear the first question is something about how do you make that connection, especially when we live in a world of money. And what we were talking about earlier is that this is a new paradigm involving money, a new idea, a new consciousness of it. Let's talk about that. This is a huge one um, because when we transition from the uh, physical world um, to a new earth reality, um, most were under the perception that we were supposed to one, work for free and do everything for free. Um, I went through this as well. I tried it. It didn't work. Um, I was doing without, trying to help everybody else and, and reach everybody else too. And um, it took having things, quote, removed from my reality to show me that it's not the way it is. Um, our changing our perceptions of money and changing our focus away from money um, and releasing the limits and constraints that we have about money is key. Um, because if money is there to assist with the new earth, if money is, if we utilize money, if we utilize where we live, if we utilize all of the resources that we have in order to support this, we never run out. Um, we don't do without because things, everything is brought to us that we need. Um, and then what happens is removing the mentality of lack 
is also key. Um, we all, as light workers, go through or went through a reality where we thought we had to lack in order to help everybody else. We had to do without. That is a mentality as well, and we had to trans transcend that to come to a space to understand that that was human too. And that's a hard one for light workers and way showers uh, like myself to, to get through. And everybody here is this. It's not me or you and, and that we're special. Um, everybody is, and we have forgotten this. Um, money becomes a way to reach others. And so therefore we ask for that which we need to come forth. We utilize everything we have for this journey, and then we don't do without. Um, but the thing about it is, is that one, we don't know what to ask for. This is key. Two, we don't realize we have the right. It's another one. I did a um, ceremony with a group recently, a small group, and and I, I told them, I said, now ask for what you want. And and one looked at me and she said, I didn't realize I could do that. And I'm like, exactly. And because we don't know that we can. Um, we can ask for anything we want. And the key is how we utilize it and what our intention is. This is a reality of intention where we come from a place of love and unity and, and supporting each other um, in every moment. And if we don't have the resources to support ourselves, how are we supposed to help others as well? So I started understanding that I didn't need to do without anymore, that I just needed to use what I had for the journey and for assisting others and for um, taking everything that I had to support this, this new earth mentality, which is not a mentality, it's a way of existing now. Um, the human um, operates from a mentality, we just operate from our heart. We don't focus on money. Um, we say, bring us money so that we can do what we're here to do, um, to assist everyone. And then it comes. Um, the moment one focuses on money, their soul separates off. Their higher self and their lower self um, shift from a place of unification, and we go back into lack mode. And my higher self showed me years ago, quit focusing on money, just focus. What are you doing in this moment? And then I started saying, oh, I'm creating a lack mentality by focusing on money. So I quit. Um, in this moment, and those were my words for a very long time, in this moment I'm a creator. And in this moment I'm creating what? And I had to stop. I had to start realizing that when my mind was focused on money, I was separated off and I wasn't producing anything at all. So I stopped focusing on me and I started focusing on what I was doing. And then every moment became a creation and, and putting information out. I would actually get up and say, okay, higher self, bring me something to write and share to help another. It wasn't about me anymore. And for a long time, in the beginning, I would sit at the computer and go, I need to write, I need to write. The moment I focused on me, I couldn't write. That's because my focus was on myself. So I got up. And I said, okay, bring me something to write to help others. Bring me something profound to share. Bring me something that will unify and, and assist. And it started flooding forth. It had to remove me from the picture because that's where we get stuck. And we focus on ourselves. Now there is an important aspect of that, that that we have to recognize is that in the beginning, um, we lived in a that out there world. Then to wake up, um, awaken, different versions of whatever ver you want to look at. And um, when it's time to wake up, then we start. Saying, oh, wait a minute! I've never focused on myself. I don't. I need. To, I need sleep. I need to focus on me. I need a love. I've never done that. And so we actually take all of our attention off that outside world and we focus it in. And we have to come inside and we have to expand our light. We have to act our soul frequency from our self aspect. It's light and it acts our frequency than our, our lower, these are words, lower, higher. I don't like those anymore, but they're what we've got. Um, 
our human aspect of us. Um, and so we shift to a place of, I need to focus on me right now. This is what I need in order to expand my own light. It has to be a priority for a while. And we ha until we learn how to do that simultaneously while working to assist others and expanding our own light, that takes a lot of balance and that takes a lot of maneuvering and, and, and focused intention as well. Um, then it becomes we, and we emerge into a reality, a frequency, where we're all one and of the same frequency here. Um, there is no competition. There is no, um, it's about me anymore. Um, and I find that I only separate off when I'm around others that are separate too. I, I've had to be very careful um, to remove uh, those from my reality that are really separated because it will actually cause us or affect our reality as well if we're not if we're not conscious. Um, there does come a point that we are so conscious that we don't allow that anymore. But there are times that we get depleted energetically um, if we're around too many that are um, pulling energy from us or take 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 mode. And if you don't hold the power inside already, then you have to remove yourself until you do. Um, and you have to build your own power. You have to build your own strength. You have to go outside and get sunshine and activate um, your star being DNA. That's a whole nother uh, topic that would take forever because that's pretty cool. But if it's um, not, when, when your crystalline start act starts activating and your star being DNA starts activating, bizarre is an understatement. Um, it is not typical of the human way and it is quite the opposite of what everybody perceived. So we are supposed to get sun, our skin is supposed to burn. It is not um, go protect yourself against the sun. We are the sun. Um, there, I can look straight into the sun and sun charge and I don't hold the density any longer um, that, that we once did. And most will look up and go, oh, it's too bright, it's blinding me. That's because there's still density inside that's got to clear. And that's all that is. Um, there are many things. This reality actually materializes. It becomes a physical one that you walk in. Once you've held the vibration of belief and, and unification long enough for it and you know what to look for, which is what I do with people when I work with them, either one-on-one -on -one or online, is to know what to look for and how to bring that forth and how to shift vibrationally in tune. Um, it's an entire reality that you exist in by being so aware of your own frequency that you can tune it at will. And when you tune intentionally, you change your own vibration, you change your reality out there. And there is a lot to this. Um, but um, people will see if they know what to look for and intentionally shift. Uh, we can affect the weather. We can do anything we want to. We are it. It is us. So it's amazing to learn to pay attention and see um, how much is truly not the way we perceived it to be and how things truly are here. They are very simple. There are no details. Uh, and nobody really cares about anything at all. We operate from a place of love, um, compassion, um, generosity. Um, we operate from a space where we don't care. We, we meet people, we don't even know their last name. You don't know how old anybody is. You don't know what they did for a living. It, you, you meet them, you connect with their heart, and that's all you need. And, and that's all there is. And that's a beautiful place to be. Uh, when, when everybody comes together and is sharing from a place of love and they are their higher self aspect, it's utterly magnificent and there is no threat there. But you don't come to exist in that reality by holding on to a mentality that you need to protect yourself from anything at all. Uh, that old physical reality that others still live in, yes it does exist because they believe it, because that's where their energy is. Um, most, we used to look at the TV and say, wow, we're being um, bombarded with um, untruths and I need to cut that out. 
and you start removing all of these things from your reality. And most don't realize that the physical world out there is the same thing too. That if your physical world out there is made up of the same stuff you used to watch on TV, you're bringing in the same reality and programming that you once did. It's just on a larger screen. So you start removing all of it. You remove everybody that represents that. You remove every belief and that energy that feeds that. If you do not want it to be a part of your reality, uh, you pay attention to what energy you're feeding, which is huge, because when you participate in it, it becomes your reality. And we choose what we participate in here. Um, you don't create and exist on the earth. Um, technically, we don't create anything. We vibrate back into a reality of where, where we have always been. And it is ancient knowledge, and it is ancient memories, and it is lineages so far beyond here. You do not access that by holding on to the old belief systems and the old separations that you once did. You have to choose. Um, you have to choose that you want it and that you want to let go. And then from that point forward, your higher self aspect will start bringing things to you to support you. Um, but you have to make the choice. This is where most people don't understand. They keep waiting for something to happen. Um, a lot of people have a lazy bone. i got to get over the lazy bone. There's no lazy here. Uh, we actually get up and we do realities. Um, we move the energy ourselves. We um, all become way showers. We start creating change, but not from a place of fight. Uh, this is uh, fight is the old belief system. Struggle is the old belief system. Uh, we don't live there anymore. So uh, we pay attention. Uh, we don't cater to the human aspect, and we actually say no a lot. Uh, something we didn't know we could do, which is necessary. Uh, we have to maintain boundaries um, until we don't need them anymore. So there's a lot. And go ahead, <laughs> I'm sorry. I want to sing that Madonna song, Love Don't Live Here Anymore, in that realm, in the competition and the lack. It's wonderful. So here we are as we create our new world and remove all of these belief systems. Some would be frightened to expand in such a way, like you said earlier, there were people that said, no, I'm not ready for this, but this is the work to do um, within each of us, in each of our lives, anything that takes us out of alignment or off kilter and into this aggravation is definitely that which we need to look at and realize that we did create it, so watch out what we're creating. So let's talk a little bit now about the mind, more of the mind. You had mentioned in your ascension process that the veils were put back in front of you. Mm. And this was even another conversation that the veils are within us, they are in our mind. But the quantum field is in our mind as well. Can you lead us through a process or a, an experience where we can feel and identify and allow the expansion of the quantum field or the unified field? Well, the, the veils are in every part of us. So it's not just in the mind. It's in the physical body. It, it's in our heart. Um, they're the walls we put up. Um, it's the safety mechanisms built in. Um, a lot of people, when I go to work in their energy, they have safety mechanisms in their physical body in place. And, and I have to get them to relax enough um, and to let go of their need, their, their body has its own consciousness that goes into protection mode. And I will actually have to bypass that, and I have ways that I can do that, and I won't do it without the other's permission. Um, but the first place I always go is to their head. I can override and shut their safety mechanisms down uh, for them and, and bring them completely out of that dimension with their physical body into another one completely. Um, and it's funny, just it only takes about an hour to sh take them completely physically out of that dimension and so that they can expand into multiple dimensions all at one time. Now, the human mind will want to hold on. It will want control. It gets very flighty in the head, and we get very high. Now, I've seen so many people go, I need to get grounded, I need to get grounded. We're not supposed to ground and fly. You, you can't do both. Um, that it was a human perception, and I actually have had people lately go, I, I'm ungrounded. We're supposed to be. We float. Um, you have to be ungrounded for a while, though. 
um, there's a difference in grounding um, we, we earth. Uh, we go sit on the earth and we make a connection that's in a different way. Um, we allow our head to float. We go to sleep and relax the mind as much as we can because uh, when we wake up, we don't remember anything from the day before. A lot of times we don't remember anything in that moment. I can be having a conversation and it's gone and don't care. And we just let it go. Um, our perception is that we have to hold knowledge in our physical mind, which is not true. The unified field holds all knowledge and, and we exist there. And when we start letting go of the need to hold the knowledge inside our human mind. So um, we do go through a process where we can't remember anything at all. We go through a process where we, we forget. And you have to forget the human need in order to exist as your higher self aspect um, in, in a unified field. Um, this is going to sound really weird, uh, but the more you forget of your human aspect, the more you remember of your higher self or your um, ancient or your Lemurian or your galactic um, aspect here. They are all the same thing, different spaces of consciousness that you access by letting go of the old um, way of believing. Um, is that what you mean by our human self? Is this part of it? Um, I have access. Um, our, your DNA holds everything you need in knowledge. You transmit it from inside of you. You activate your own DNA by reprogramming it, by being conscious. Every time you open your heart, you activate new DNA and light. So therefore, if you spend every moment opening your heart and letting go, then technically you're activating them light all the time. And so your light is your higher self aspect, your light is your soul, your light is um, the sun, um, expanding your solar plexus from the inside out. Um, everything is a, a part of this. There is not one thing that occurs, not one, one moment that happens that is not a part of awakening and ascension here. Um, it's the only reason any of us are here. And so if we embrace it and say, wow, it's just a part of the process. We quit fixing so much on, on the separation of belief systems and mentalities anymore. Um, the physical body releases through outbreaks and our star particles activate and we look like we've been bit by bugs all over. That's not typical and normal. So if we go back into a mind that there's something wrong with us, we actually close down and go back into fix it mode. There's nothing to fix. Um, we, there are many things here that don't make sense. Um, this is about embracing the things that don't make sense. The bizarre, I say, a, a, Embrace crazy, and because you have to be in order to come to exist here. Um, the new realities don't make sense. They do not conform to anything of the old human mindset at all. Um, there is absolutely no way to comprehend what's coming. Um, our minds, our human minds, are way too limited for that. And so everything you're shown, I'm going back to the dream state for a moment. Everything you're shown in a dream state that's outrageous is a reality somewhere. The moment you say, wow, I could have that if I believed it, you have to start working with your mind to believe that it can exist. Um, the human mind, all of your bodies have to unify in frequency. So if you want to know what to do, focus on your mind. Focus on upping your frequency. Focus on being happy. Focus on not trying to do um, what's safe. Focus on jumping into faith. Um, focus on um, believing the unbelievable. Focus on challenging your own mind because every time you do, and sleep is a huge part of this process that most people do not understand. Getting it's not typical to get out and go out in the sunshine and go to sleep as, as a part, the most important part of your day. But technically, if I have a choice between barreling down and placing limits and working myself to death and going out and getting sunshine and going to sleep. I'll go out and get sunshine and go to sleep because I know when I wake up, something new is going to arrive to support me on my journey. I don't need to know what it is. 
And the human aspect needs to know what, who, what, when, where, why, how. We don't need to, we just know. That's all that matters. Um, just knowing takes a lot of trust. You have to learn to trust yourself. You don't trust yourself if you don't start um, listening. And this is a place where our, we are in listening and receptive mode in every moment of the day. Um, the moment our human mind kicks into need to control mode, need to make things work, need to fit it in a box, we shut down our unified mind and heart and we go back into human aspect and, and we cut off our access um, to the vast amount of knowledge that um, it's, it's funny because Nikola Tesla or, um, Einstein, all of, all of those um, that brought forth um, amazing knowledge, that's where we live. We have access to that ourselves. Um, the amount of knowledge that I can access um, goes far beyond my human brain. I actually have to get on Wikipedia and look up the things I see and understand and try to figure out human-wise what they mean. Seen in molecular structures and subatomic um, molecules and chemical compounds and um, how a how the sun um, I listen to the solar sun inside my head and uh, the um, solar flares that you spoke of um, are quite different from us. They a solar flare to us is Christ consciousness. A solar flare to the human brings up anger and separation inside. And once you transcend that, every time there's a solar flare, it's amazing. We get lit up, it jacks up our light. We love solar flares. If we're not getting jacked up in every moment and getting bombarded with frequency activations, um, for me, we're bored. We're not happy. And there's nothing for us to do. Um, our minds and our hearts function based upon the amount of energy transmitted by that sun out there, which technically correlates to the amount of sun and light that we hold inside. So when there's a solar flare, we expand in light, and we get to encompass multiple dimensions all at one time. We love solar flares um, because they are not the typical solar flare for what most people would comprehend. Solar flare is a solar flare for the human. And it brings up what was hidden before. That's it. Um, it, it, it. Nothing is as it was perceived to be. It, it is the opposite in this world. The power that we have as masters to activate our DNA with our consciousness and the star being DNA, we're going to have to come back and talk about that in another show because that mm -hmm. too is very fascinating. So I love what you say there. You know, we have to be in charge of our frequency in every moment that we walk on this planet. It comes in the form of our relationships. And when they're, like you were mentioning, sometimes you remove yourself from those relationships. Mm -hmm. In our families and some of our closest connections, that's the areas for some of the deepest growth within ourselves and again jumping into the faith that's a great one because I know so many would say again this boxed in by programming if I'm gonna go out and do my own work or become a healer and do courses and go and help other people or be a massage therapist or live my passion whatever that is I've got to work really hard at it but this conversation has shown that incredible balance that's necessary. And you and I were talking about this earlier before. Um, the divine masculine and the divine feminine within both. Um, one is that creating factor and the other is the nurturing, let it come about and be born element. So, gosh, when we take that time to slow down and go lie in the sun and fall asleep in the sun, that is some of the best thing that we can do because that ultimately recharges us to be ready for that good stuff coming in that you mentioned. Well, and one thing I found too is the more human one is, the more the sun shuts them down and because it forces them to go to sleep. This is why so many people will go out in the sun and they'll have to go home and go to bed. I go out in the sun to charge. Um, I actually um, was without sun for many days. I had to travel 
I couldn't get out and I got so depleted I couldn't function anymore. I did not realize how necessary the sun was. Mm -hmm. we're, we're walking crystals. I have to charge myself as a crystal and we glitter, we glow. Um, I had to go out in the sun or I couldn't function. I could not hold the amount of light that I was used to anymore. And so for me, I, I did not understand that's part of why I had to move to Kauai. I had hit a frequency where the sun was going to be necessary every day. I can't maintain the amount of light that I am supposed to maintain and transmit and anchor in new realities and without the amount of sun that I need to keep my own crystals charged. Or the crystals, when they start to activate inside of us, they're in our hands and they're in our feet, they're in our face, in our head, they're everywhere, and they break up to be our star particles, and we glitter. And yes, that is another conversation. But when they start to activate lately, and especially the last few weeks, there has been an intense amount of crystal activation going on, Christ consciousness for a lot of people, for their ascension um, to become ascended masters here. Um, and to, to embrace this reality because we've hit a state of consciousness where there are many now coming through. Um, the crystals, when they activate inside our body, um, one crystalline um, throws our body acidic. And so um, we have to stay in pH balanced in order to um, maintain the physical aspect and assist with that or Anything that's out of alignment with us in, in energy um, based upon uh, an emotion or a mental thought or the physical aspect, um, we will actually um, go to um, sick is the human's perspective, but there's nothing wrong with us. Um, our hands heat up, swell up, burn, um, and break out in bumps all over our feet do too. Now for the feet, I didn't understand that when mine was activating through the year for a really long time that I had gout and that was my crystals trying to activate my feet. Did not know that at the time. I was very, very sick. My whole body went completely um, toxic and my liver and my kidneys and everything shut down because I was so far out of alignment inside that my physical body couldn't activate my crystalline structure yet. Um, the hands, I went out in the sun all day long, and, and my higher self said, you're to go out all day long today. Okay, so I went to the beach all day, not knowing why I was going. I dropped everything. I listened. I, <laughs> I learned. I listened to everything, no matter. Usually, if it's bizarre, it's, it's what you're supposed to be listening to. And so it's the opposite here. I came back, I went to bed that night, woke up the next morning, my hands completely swollen, on fire, burning. Um, so huge, my fingers looked like they were about to pop. I had heat coming out and I had bumps everywhere. Now the first thing I did was uh-oh and then immediately it was no, this is your crystalline. And I went outside and put my hands in the sun and I had crystals all in my hands that you could see through the skin. And of course the first thing I did was run for the camera to take pictures to put up on Facebook for everybody and lo and behold everybody all over the world is going yes, us too. And now the thing about it is lately these crystals have been activating, mine have been in my face, um, the whole right side, the right side of the body is being affected and for a lot of us right now, so it's been the right ear, and this is what's up with my face, my eye, um, and my hands and feet activated, uh, I don't know, last year at some point in time, whatever, I don't do time so I can't remember anything anymore. Um, but when the crystals break up, they become star particles and, and they and they are underneath your skin and then everything glitters and glows and it's what radiates uh, the light that others can see. It also is what creates the holographic effect when people look at you and you and you start shifting and morphing into other beings as well because people will see me and go, you look like a mermaid right now or you look like an elf or you look like a this because we actually do in the certain certain frequencies. Recently our eyes started glowing, mine glow gold. It's weird, you can't capture it on camera. It happens when you're with others um, in, in the same space. Our, our eyes have started changing colors. Um, it's a very holographic transmission that comes from us. Um, really weird, yes. Um, not typical, no, and if you 
are a human, you're going to discount what you see and call it something else. And there are so many people who go, well, that could be that. Yes, it could in your world, not mine. Um, mine is what my higher self shows me, which is so totally beyond this physical world. So um, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, the crystalline has been activated with a lot of people lately, and they're in a lot of physical pain. It is a part of the crystalline structure. And the hands and the feet and the face, um, I had a lot of crystals in my face have to activate recently and the whole right side of my face swelled up. I woke up and went, oh cool, more crystals. What did I do? Old human aspect was don't go out in the sun, it'll make it worse. I went straight out into the sun, I said okay, jack me up. I let my face swell up as big as I could. The next day I woke up, swelling going down, crystals activated, um, almost done. Um, if I had done human, it would have lasted for months while it continued to try to break out and activate. I learned, go straight into the sun and activate it. Let the skin peel off. Um, the skin, the outer layers of the skin actually have to come off so that you can, um, um, the new skin underneath, um, hold your crystals. Mm, that's the easiest way for me to explain it. It's, um, but. The old, it's like a, a snake and you're peeling off the old skin, a rebirth, whatever you want to call it, has all got to come off. And the clients, when they come, we go straight into the sun and they will intentionally let their, we uncover every part of their body and um, so that they can actually get sun on the parts of their body that haven't seen the sun. They will burn. Um, this is by choice. They know this when we do this. The first time some don't know. Um, but what happened was as soon as they started peeling underneath, the skin had glitter and stuff underneath it. And they're like, wow, that's really cool. No idea whatsoever. And they've been avoiding the sun for years. You have to go out in the sun. You have to activate your crystals. Um, so this is not a typical existence. And if you want typical, you're going to stay human because typical doesn't exist here. And so um, star particles, yes. You know, we can go out sun outside. You use that reality out there um, to show you what's inside of you, and, and we use it to activate ourselves. Everything out there um, is a part of us, and so once we use it, you, once we realize this, we actually use it um, in order to assist us in, in activations as well. And you can change locations, activate different frequencies. And I want to go back for one moment because it, I didn't say it earlier, and it was really important: the uh, quantum field inside the head. Um, neural pathways have to be opened. Um, the other the part of the brain that's never been accessed. Um, don't quote me here because I don't know specific. Everything is from inside of me. Um, the typical human has only access to the capacity of five to ten percent of their human mind or, or their mind. Um, I actually got to see the human mind and the universal side, not mind, side by side, and the same thing with the heart and how they unify. So I see all this from inside. Um, the um, yes, yeah, so when you yawn, your vibrational frequency is raising too. So that's a cool thing. Um, oh no, I, I coughed. I had myself muted. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I just saw the thing. Um, the unified mind is the other portions of your brain opened up and when they start to open up it, sound, it feels like wind or electricity running through your head. It'll actually open the neural pathways. They will blow open. The pineal gland has to be activated. It's been shut down. Um, this gives us um, the eye of Horus 360 degree range, the whole entire head, the pituitary gland, the frontal lobe area all has to be opened up. The human goes, oh I have a migraine. You know, your pineal gland is trying to open. Your head is trying to expand. Um, the old human, and um, the more you think, the more logical you are, the more your head's going to hurt. You have to actually shut down and close your, close your eyes and go inward or go to sleep. Um, whatever allows you to relax and allow your mind to expand. Um, you will feel a physical release from your head when you do. The whole third eye region will build in light codes and get really, really heavy until you can't keep your eyes open and you have to go lay down. Sometimes it only takes about 10 minutes, just go close your eyes and you'll feel a release and then you're woken up instantly and it's time to go again. You're completely energized. You don't need a nap anymore. In the beginning you had to sleep. Now it's just a 10 minute shutdown to allow for the pressure to release so that those new light coats um, and that new knowledge can come forth and your new vision, crystals in your eyes when they start activating, activating feel like needle pricks and hurt. Um, it's a, it's a response that's sharp, painful, but then it's gone. 
those are the crystals in your eyes activating so that you can see new earth and see the different dimensions here right in front of you all at one time. Um, all of this is done through raising your vibrational frequency and cutting out everything that isn't in alignment with that. Um, but when, my, when the quantum field released fully from my head and my whole brain expanded, it was poof, and it expanded really, really huge, and then it came back in. And from that point on, I was functioning in the unified field. And um, I can feel it now, and my head will get heavy, and it's like, go close your eyes. I'll close my eyes, get really sleepy, can't stay awake, walking around lethargic, go lay my head down. Ten minutes later, as soon as my mind relaxed, poof, my head expands. Um, it is a very physical experience. You will feel it. Um, and then you're, you're awake and you're going again. There is no sleep necessary, and when this is occurring, we just need to shut down so that the brain can expand a little bit more. And the one thing that is key is to not believe in every moment that you're in the old reality. Because so many people open their eyes or they wake up and they think it's the same reality they had the day before. It is not. Every moment, if you can stay conscious, you can say, wow, something cool is coming forth. Because you have the power to call forth realities now. You can activate realities simultaneously at will through being conscious because they all run at the same time. There's no separation anymore. The cool part is that I've started finding myself standing in a reality that I saw a year, the year and a half before. And, and that is pretty profound to us as humans to realize, oh my goodness, um, a year and a half ago I was shown a portal and I was told to let go of my family. Now that was devastating, and because, but I knew the words were, you have to let go. And I had to bring up the emotions of attachment, I had to bring up the tears, I had to bring up all of that stuff that kept me tied to that aspect of my family. This was huge. I wasn't letting go of my family. I was letting go of my attachment and the aspect and the version of them by upgrading my own version so that I could have a completely different family to interact with, so that I was not attached to them and it wasn't holding me back. I was shown a portal in a specific place and the amount of fear and then it was gone and I opened my eyes because I was in a closed eyed state. And it was, now you got to let go. I had to go home and I had to cry and bring up all of the emotions of letting go of my family. And then the words were, now go back and visit your family. I'm like, are you kidding me? I just had to let go. And when I went back, it was a completely different family, a different version than I had before. I had a conscious, more conscious family than I did before. Um, I had to work with the version. I had to let go of the version of them. Now, a year and a half later, I'm sitting in the backyard of where I live now, and you can hear the birds. It's very interactive here. Um, I'm sitting in the backyard, and I look up, and, and my higher self showed me, now that's the portal you were shown. You're on the other side of it. It took me a year and a half to materialize on the other side of the portal through separation of time. And I was shown how portals work and how we actually can activate portals and vortexes at will and walk through them anytime we want. And it's your higher self aspect will show you things so that things make sense. You have to sit in silence. You have to connect with nature. You have to allow the time to be by yourselves. You have to cut out all of those distractions in order to listen and go into receptive mode. Sitting outside in the backyard, I was shown this and I looked up and I was amazed that the place that I saw was my backyard and that I was sitting in it here. And so our human has a mentality of how things are supposed to occur. It has a belief system of how things work and they are not, um, they're not true. Um, it's completely different and it is simple and it's done through raising our vibrational frequency and unifying inside, letting go of the separation, the fears, the inability to share anything, knowledge, money, our, our home, whatever it is that we have, we are supposed to utilize everything we have for this journey to help others and, and allow so that we can call realities forth for us here. Um, but the quantum field relaxes inside our mind. Things become very lucid here. 
Um, the moment I was realizing, observing recently, I, I hear the frequencies in my head, and I tones will um, go off and say, "Okay, everything's going very lucid," and then you know everything's about to bend and get all cool. And um, staying conscious in every moment, realizing that this is your lucid dream, you you get to do anything you want. Um, is very important and because you'll actually start doing things intentionally to activate a reality here. Um, the moment the quantum field starts to relax and things start to bend and breathe and things move, things appear uh, that weren't there before, it, it's a very interactive reality. It's very psychedelic. It's weird. Um, but when you're observing humans out there, their control kicks in. We're letting go and expanding, and the human aspect of others is buckling down really tight. So there's an opposite effect to everything as it occurs. As we're letting go, the human aspect of others is buckling down. So I was able to observe this recently with a bunch of, uh, of others around me as the um, frequencies kicked in, and we're letting go, and others are buckling down. So if you notice yourself buckling down, if you notice yourself um, constraining. If you notice yourself trying to put things in a box to be fixed and, and you need the, the control, then, then um, try to let go as much as you can um, because you're only constraining yourself. Being multidimensional allows us access to other dimensions in a waking state here. And we get to choose realities if we, if we want. There's a certain way um, that we can do this. There are tons of ways we can do this um, if we know how. Um, and we open up to the possibility that we can, and the human mind says we can't. And we're doing things that others are still trying to prove. We've done them. We exist here. Um, the unified field, the quantum field, is all inside of us. We just open it up and go. Uh, we jump. We hop. We skip. We we do everything quantum style. We so obliterate realities, and we do not listen to I can't. It doesn't exist. Um, we will go human, more human at times, and we just come to understand that it's energy that's got to be burned off that's keeping us uh, stuck into a, in a limited reality still. And so when the energies go human, we understand it, and we bring up the energy, and we let it go. We burn it off, we go out, we kick, we scream, we, we stomp our feet, we scream, and get it out of the physical uh, body, let go of any emotion that we held on to, it's very fast, and then we quickly unify right back again and come to balance and peace inside. And so there are many things that we can do that are not typical, and but they're very important and for transcending the old belief system and the limits that we held in place. I hope that helped answer. <laughs> wow, really fascinating to hear all of your incredible information and insight for so many other people. You really are a way shower. And you've got a lot of great tools and training and meditations and MP3s that assist people along the way. This is something that you've been working on for years. And there's a special offer on this webpage. You can scroll down and see that. Some of you may be familiar with the offers on this page. And there's a new one that we'd like you to share more about, Lisa. Um, this one, um, the last time I, I did something that um, offered as much as my services as I could, and this time I had to get a little bit more creative, which I love, um, because it causes us to expand. So this one is um, includes the, um, I think, my books. Um, I have two, Awakening to Remembering, which is the um, precursor. It, it actually explained this in very simple form. And then the Navigating Dimensions, which is a guidebook um, for transcending a human aspect and coming to be your higher self and your, your master self again. Um, those in, I think, signed copies, which is a lot of people have been requesting all over the world, so I, I believe I included those um, in PDF form. And then also um, the activations, which are um, can be intense and because they activate your own light inside. Um, most people will go to sleep to them, um, the Merkaba, the light body, um, in unification. Um, ancient knowledge, clearing fears and limitations, especially those of light workers, and um, everybody's a light worker, so it doesn't really matter. Um, the Lemurian one um, and the ancient knowledge one um, and the um, light body one are pretty, um, 
they hit really quick. Uh, the Lemurian one actually activated me and started bringing forth a lot of, I did not know there was so much deep trauma to the Lemurian energies that was about to come up. Um, that has been new for me. That was a surprise at how much intense pain there was uh, in the, with the Lemurian energies of old, old, old um, that had to come up and go. So I actually myself have been working through uh, clearing Lemurian um, memories and, and pains and emotions that I didn't know was there. Um, but as far as the specials go, um, it has the activations, which can be pretty profound for a lot of people. It will activate a lot. You are supposed to go to sleep to them if you can. Um, you receive in frequency. Uh, in light activations because everything that I record um, transmits in tones and, and frequencies as well. Um, the Lemurian one was actually recorded, I was told to go down to the ocean here on Kauai and record it with the Lemurian ocean in the background that it would actually transmit an additional frequency. And so it's only about nine and a half minutes long, but apparently it's working really well for a lot of people that have really wanted to activate their part of their um, remembering here. And then I have um, the Ascended Mastery course. It was the first course that I did. Um, it's 16 hours of recorded light encoded um, activations, and we did it in a group. Um, I have the Ascended Mastery community, which I did not include. You can add that on later. Um, the because it's got quantum mastery and, and a bunch of others that's like, I don't remember, 60 something hours of recorded videos, so it's a lot. Um, but I have a community that's in, that it, I did not include in the special just because I, somebody's really got to be ready. Somebody really has to want to take it to that level. And so I am going to offer that later, but it is offered as an additional upgrade um, via my website. Um, the Ascended Mastery course and then the personalized uh, sessions online that we actually record. I do one-on-one -on -one because I actually transmit in frequency based upon yours. And so when I connect with one, everything that I need comes through. And we never know what that is until that time. Each person is different. Each soul is different. And their frequency and, and we work soul to soul. So while I will speak in human, I'm actually transmitting in light which actually speaks directly to your soul. And even this video um, that we're doing will record and do the same thing because it's in tones and it's in frequencies. That is a soul connection. It is a galactic connection. It is a Lemurian connection, whatever you want. Um, it transmits to you what you need above what your human mind can comprehend. So you're actually receiving multiple bandwidths of information. You're receiving the human words. You're receiving in tones and frequencies and you're receiving the activations that transmit simultaneously to your higher self aspect and your human aspect at the same time. Um, so when I speak, I speak human, but I speak in light. And they both transmit in order to activate you when you can comprehend and when you cannot. And they are a contract that we all have here. So anytime we connect, um, it is through something we prearranged in order to come together and do here. So every time I have somebody show up in my inbox or on my page or in a session and say, I was told to book a session with you, I know. We have been connected in, in multiple states. I have people tell me, you came to my dream last night and you talked to me. And it happens all the time all around the world. People will show up and book sessions and not know why they're there. It is pretty cool because I will wake up with knowledge that I'm bunch of people are about to come forth and I will, um, it's a conscious state that we actually work. And I did it last night as well and I woke up this morning to having worked with a ton of people and a lot of stuff going on knowing that it just activated a, a whole bunch of new realities as well. And we all have this capability which is beautiful. So um, those are the three things, the books, the activations, there's more than three, um, the Ascended Mastery course or and or, I can't remember, um, the um, personal session and they can do that through uh, you as well. So thank you. Really wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Lisa. Activate new realities. It's here and it's going to be fun when we get to play in this wonderland of multi-dimensions. Lisa Transcendence Brown, thank you so much. We'll have you back and do more healing conversations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm.